Welcome back to the Health and Wellness Spot with me, Dr. Lewis Muchile. Now, I've taken an interest in vitamins, and there are two types of vitamins broadly. Basically, vitamins are just those uh, micronutrients that are required in the body in very small quantities. Okay, but they play a very major role in our bodies. So, starting from immunity and different uh, different vitamins have different functions. So, we'll know. As we go ahead now remember we have water soluble vitamins and fat soluble vitamins so water soluble vitamins they cannot be stored in the body they are soluble in water and therefore they they are easy to be metabolized and excreted from the body however fat soluble vitamins are the ones that are soluble in fat they have to be uh, dissolved in fat before they are absorbed now that means it's hard to absorb fat soluble vitamins without consuming fat or animal fat for that matter which is the saturated fat the healthy fats therefore fat soluble vitamins are basically a d e and k so those are the fat soluble vitamins the b vitamins are the water soluble vitamins okay so the body does not have the capacity to store the b vitamins and that's why we source them uh, mostly from diets and the fat soluble vitamins these ones can be stored because they are combined with fat and then stored as fatty acids okay so yeah that is the difference between water soluble and fat soluble vitamins now fat sol soluble vitamins we already mentioned they are a d e and k now i'll start with vitamin a vitamin a is the ones that are referred to as retinoids So vitamin A are called retinoids. Now these retinoids are found uh, specifically uh, dominantly in plants and also in animals. Okay. So in plants, we have talked all through about the sour root, the fermented cabbage, spinach and cruciferous vegetables. These are the sources of vitamin A in plants. Also mushrooms. Okay. So these are very rich sources of vitamin A. In animal, they are predominantly in the liver, uh, in the in the muscle meat. So basically, organ meat and muscle meat, and then uh, 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 chicken, okay, and the eggs. And also, uh, in animals, you can get them from the kidney. So basically, those are the organ meats, okay. Good. Then vitamin A occurs in three forms. Number one form is retinol. Number two form is retinal. Then number three form is retinoic acid. Now, in the body or in the eye, retinol can be converted to retinal. Then retinal can be converted to retinoic acid. Also, retinal can be converted back to retinol. However, once the vitamin A has been converted to retinoic acid, it cannot, it cannot go back. Okay, so it is just one way from retinal to retinoic acid. That is it. So this will exist as the active component of vitamin A, but retinal can be converted back to retinol. Okay, good. So now this retin the retinoic acid is the one that is very important in both uh, in all the functions of uh, vitamin A. Now, what are the functions of vitamin A? Function number one is in skin development and nourishment. Now you realize uh, when you have acne, the products that are used for management of acne are retinoic acid. So retinoic acid is used in management of acne. However, there are different forms of acne. So there's the cystic acne, the one that is caused by an increased level of uh, estrogen, the one that occurs in postmenopausal women and uh, women who consume so much carbohydrates and these products that are soy therefore that one cannot be managed by vitamin a or retinoic acid why because you need to lower your estrogen for that uh, acne to disappear and vitamin a will only occur in all other forms of uh, uh, will only help in all other forms of uh, vitamin a deficiency which is acne okay the acne that is as a result of vitamin a deficiency so it will help you nourish your skin and give you a, a smooth skin also it will help clear wrinkles good number two we have reproduction so number one is the skin enrollment number two is reproduction now in reproduction there are two uh, uh, two things involved number one is the sperm 
and number two is the placenta. So basically, under the production and development and maturation of the body, this is the channel. Retinol is converted to retinal. Okay, that is both in the eye and in the body. So for the production and for development and maturation, we are talking about the body. So in the body, retinol is converted to retinal. Then retinal to retinoic acid. Now this retinoic acid is a very important component in uh, translation and transcription. So transcription of uh, uh, DNA to RNA, then RNA translation to proteins. And therefore these proteins are the ones that will be used in maturation, development of organs, development of muscles, and any roles of proteins in the body. Also, it will be used in the development of DNA that is high in the head of the sperm. Okay? So basically those are the two, the placenta and the, and the sperm. And also in development, the same, same procedure. So you develop those proteins that will be helpful in development of this and body structures. Okay? Good. So for vision and the eye, Again, the channel is the same, from retinol to retinal, to retinoic acid, to, D, to, to DNA, then to RNA, then to proteins that uh, uh, will help you, uh, will aid you in vision. Now, I want you to remember, when you come to vision, we talk about night blindness or night vision. When there is dim light, there is activation of uh, proteins in the eye and uh, uh, this vitamin A is converted to a component that is called rhodopsin. So, rhodopsin. Okay. This component called rhodopsin is the one that is uh, helpful when there is low lights or there is darkness. So it will help you see whenever there is limited light. So those are the four functions of vitamin uh, A. Now, so we've talked about vitamin A, we've talked about the sources, we've talked about the functions. So basically that is it for vitamin A. So we move to vitamin K. Now vitamin K is a very important vitamin in uh, the process of coagulation of blood. When I say coagulation, I mean blood clotting, okay? Yeah, so that reaction that leads to blood clotting. Now, how, do, how does this happen? Vitamin K plays a major role in uh, uh, addition or combination of clotting factors or clotting proteins plus the platelets, which are the cells that aid in coagulation. So you have in the liver, you have these proteins that are produced to help you get uh, to get, recover from uh, an injury or from bleeding. So when you get that cut, okay, so platelets come and form a mesh on that cut and that mesh will be a source for other cells to coagulate and then block that cut so that you don't bleed. Now, proteins, coagulation proteins plus platelets have to combine to form that mesh. Now this combination is aided by vitamin K. However, you cannot use vitamin K alone, you must add calcium, okay, and this calcium we can source it from the bones or from diet. So therefore, vitamin K is very important in this pro coagulation process for forming that mesh so that it covers the wound and then you start the recovery process and forming a scar. So basically, that is the function of vitamin K. And sources of vitamin K are the same. We have the sauerkraut, which is fermented cabbage. Then we have uh, liver and organ meats. So those are the sources of vitamin K. We have cruciferous vegetables. We have carrots. You'll get high content of uh, that in vitamin K. Also, vitamin A, you can get it in carrots, okay? Okay, yeah. Only that it exists as beta carotene. And actually in plants, vitamin A exists as beta carotene, which is in, in carrots too. However, most of these products nowadays are, are GMO. So again, that is another problem. Now, so back to vitamin K. So the sources of vitamin K, we already said the sucrote. We've said there is the liver and uh, kidneys and organ meat. Then we also said uh, uh, you get it in cruciferous vegetables like spinach, uh, uh, whatever, what else? Uh, the kales, the broccoli, they will give you vitamin K. So that will help you in coagulation and uh, wound healings. Then the, the other one is vitamin E. Vitamin E basically are antioxidants. So vitamin E is, vitamin e is specifically an antioxidant and is called alpha tocopherol. Alpha tocopherol. So that is the name for vitamin E. Okay. Now since it's an antioxidant, what does it do? Remember you cannot have maximum effect of vitamin E if you don't have vitamin C. Why? Vitamin E sometimes binds uh, to other components and it's, it's now not free. We need a free vitamin E in the body. But since vitamin E in the body does not exist as a free element, then vitamin C is the one that breaks 
up the bond between vitamin E and other components to release a free vitamin E and that will help you uh, bind to radicals and then detoxify your body. So vitamin E is very important in uh, basically prevention of cancer, prevention of uh, liver damage and stuff and cleansing the body because it binds to toxic uh, radicals and therefore they are cleared from the system because it makes them become easy to excrete. So you need vitamin C to free up vitamin E to get maximum effects from this vitamin E. There are supplements for vitamin E. You can use them because they are single element supplements. So they only contain vitamin E. So yes, you can use that. However, you have to use it with vitamin C. And where do you source vitamin C? You can source vitamin C from uh, lemons. And the lemon peel has high content of vitamin C as compared to the lemon juice. Okay. So again, vitamin C is destroyed by heating. So if you heat vitamin C, you destroy it. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, do not take lemons and boil them. What you do, boil water, let it start uh, cooling. Once it becomes warm, then you can cut off your, your lemon plus the peel, then uh, insert in that water. Then it will extract vitamin C and you can sieve it and drink that juice. Okay? Or you can blend a lemon as full and then utilize it. So that is a high content of vitamin C. Vitamin C is also high in fermented cabbage. Remember that. So fermented cabbage is a superfood just like the liver and the egg. It has all components that you require uh, to help you function properly. Okay, good. Again, vitamin E is high in nuts, the liver, and seeds. Now remember, seeds are not toxic. Okay, however, if you refine them, they become a problem. So yes, you can use seeds like uh, and nuts, like ground nuts. You can eat them. However, when you start eating nuts, it is hard for you to moderate the amount of nuts that you've eaten. And again, some of the nuts are fried in seed oil, so do not do that. Eat whole foods. Seeds, nuts, liver, organ meat, fermented cabbage, and bone broth. All those have vitamin E. So, the next one has to be vitamin D. Now, vitamin D, I'll take so much time about vitamin D because it's a, it's a, it's a concrete one. Therefore, we'll take some time about uh, around vitamin D so that you get to understand and get to clear the notion that the sun, there was a time I put up a video saying the sun is the source of vitamin D and somebody uh, warned me that the sun does not provide vitamin D. So therefore, I'm going to give you an in-depth uh, view of how vitamin D is activated from the time the sun, uh, you get exposure to UV until the time you utilize vitamin D.